Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Raiders of the North Sea. Now this is a game that I went to go visit a buddy of mine, Lance. Uh, you may know him as Undead Viking. I went up to a con that he was helping put on. And I go up there every year, uh, Con of the North. And I ended up playing this game. And I was like, this game is amazing. How do I buy it? And they said, it's on Kickstarter. So I, I, I grabbed it. Like, it just so happened the Kickstarter program was going on at the same time. Went full in on all the games. Razor of the North Sea is the one I've played the most, so I'm here to review it and give you some feedback on it and whatnot. I absolutely adore this game. I'm a big fan of worker placement. I like it a lot. So I'm going to go over some pros and cons that I have of this game. I'll give you my uh, opinion on it. So pro number one, beautiful artwork. I love the art in this game. I like the usage of colors. I like the way the board looks. I like the characters in the game. The artwork is phenomenal. One of my favorite artists now is the guy who did the art in this game, and it is just fantastic. And I wish I had his name here in front of you, but it's not on the box, but his artwork is phenomenal, and I love it. I love, 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 love. Um, there is a kind of a new twist on the worker placement. My second pro that I like is you put a worker on, and then you have to take one off the board. So you don't have like your reds, your blues, that you know your workers. You put a put a Viking out, and you take one off the board, but you can't take the same one you already you, you, same one you put out there. So you can't take the same action twice, basically. So your options are kind of limited. I, I can take what doesn't have a person on it, and then now I can take an option of what has a person on this. So you might not be able to do the two things you want. Maybe you can grab one thing you want and one thing you sort of want. And what combination are you going to do that? That's interesting to me. Like that a lot. That is one of my favorite things going for this is that you take a worker, you put it on, and you take a worker and you take it off. It's just phenomenal. And I've been racking my brain for a way to do worker placement in a new and interesting way. This is definitely it. The third thing I like is that I actually feel like I'm a Viking. I feel like I'm getting my resources and I'm going out of my boats, raiding things and getting things back. I really feel like that. So I want my strength to be up. Who am I going to take with me on these raids? What resources am I going to need to go out on these raids? and what goods I'm going to get back. So it's kind of like a three-tiered thing I'm trying to get every time I go out to raid. And sometimes when I raid, people will die. I know in advance will die, and I have a choice of who will die. I really, really like that. And I've, I've read some reviews where people say that it feels a little pasted on. I don't feel that way at all. I like the usage of that. I also like how the harder raids, they theoretically give you more victory points, are further away on the board. So the ones I go further have the most risk-reward normally, um, but they're also spatially further away. Nice, nice touch in the graphic art. I feel like this game plays pretty well. Another pro of it is uh, it plays two to four, and I feel like the game is a little bit different. You're gonna score a little bit higher in a two-player game, maybe do a little more of what you want, but I still feel it scales fairly well, and I like that quite a bit. I like that it's not a different game. There's not a new rule set that comes in. Um, the screw you cards while in the game and are needed are not, uh, apparent all the time. You don't use them all the time. And actually to use them, you're taking away another action. So do I really want to hurt this one guy over here the most? Um, which will keep me from getting points. Is that what I want? So that, that went into it a little bit. The components are fantastic. That, that comes through with Kickstarter a lot of times where they're, you're going to be able to pay for a little bit better of components. And I really like the components that come in. this. The money is phenomenal in this game. I like the workers. Um, I like the goods that you're getting. They all look very different and have a different shape to them, which I'm like. They're not just regular cubes. The components are fantastic. And I'll show you those in the components section. So overall, the pros definitely outweigh the cons of this game. This is a phenomenal game, but I do want to go over a few cons in the game. One, the, 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 the people that you're hiring, the crew, if you will, 
tend to repeat quite a bit, which is okay because kind of know what's coming. I don't have a huge problem with that, but just know that it, every card is not unique. Uh, it, the re actions are a little bit repetitive. So, you know, I got to do these things, get provisions, get crew to go out. Once I go out and I come back, I got to kind of do the same thing again. That may get repetitive, but you can say the same thing about Agricola, right? You're getting wood, you're getting clay, you're getting stone. So it's not a huge issue for me. Uh, the black and gray workers, I wish they would have been a different color, maybe a blue, something different. So uh, they could be more easily differentiated. Nobody ever had a problem, but I could see some people having a problem with that between the black and the gray workers. Really, that's the only cons I have for this game. This game is phenomenal. I highly recommend this game. Find this game, track this game down. I haven't played the other games in this series, but I would, I'd be hard pressed to think the other ones uh, would be any better than this. And this covers, each game in the series covers a different era, if you will, of Vikings. This is the central area. This one is gonna be my favorite. I've read the rules for the other ones. I haven't played them enough to review them. Um, but I have played this one enough, and this one's phenomenal. I can't imagine the other ones being any better for this. This is one of my hidden gems that if you haven't got this game, drop everything and buy this game. If you're looking for a good Viking game, this is it. If you're looking for a good Euro, this is it. If you're looking for a good worker placement game, this is it. This is a phenomenal game, Raiders of the North Sea. And if you can't tell already, it's definitely a keeper. like a ticket to ride type box but I just like it especially when I put things in you're gonna get a very colorful rule book has all the rules you need to know shows the game laid out with the components and you have a good resource uh, here is the board um, it is a beautiful board let me kind of zoom in on it a little bit here I want to point out a few things to you about the rule book I mean about the uh, board uh, just how beautiful and colorful it is. And I kind of want to move around a little bit here. You got tracks, you got um, ships going out, and you have these raiding parties you're going to do. This is one of the most beautiful boards I've ever seen.
say about the rules is he keeps them to a minimum, which is good. I didn't really have any problems playing the game. Uh, I was taught this game before I read the rules, and then I went back, so I might not have the full effect on this. But you know, some of the things on the board was a little hard, and I found them on the back of the page, like what some of the buildings do. It's a really great reference. Uh, player aids are always helpful. You don't have any player aids, but most of what you need to do is in this is in this um, game itself. Once you kind of know the, the mechanisms of the game, it's fairly easy. Uh, I did have a little problem with setup, even though I played the game, uh, but. The rules are fine. You're gonna you're gonna breeze through them. You're gonna play the game. I don't think I ever had any questions once I played it. Like it all kind of is intuitive and kind of goes together. Like oh, that icon makes sense. I'm getting gold for that because there's a gold piece there. Uh, this requires two cars to get rid of. There's an X through it. That makes sense. So the rules are actually pretty good. I don't think you have any problems, especially if you ever played a Euro before in your life.
Who should buy this game? Anyone that's looking for a good Viking game that doesn't want just to take that game, although there is some of some of that, 2% in the game. Anybody looking for a solid Euro game? This is probably light to medium weight. Uh, reminds me of Champions in Midgard. Champions in Midgard gets a lot of pub, rightfully so. Great game. This is also good without so much dice rolling and luck, although there is some dice rolling in it. Um, I put those games kind of right up here together. I mean, they're very solid games. One gets a little more pub than the other, in my mind. Probably because this one is in the stores? I don't know. Uh, but uh, Raiders of the North Sea is just as good as Champions in Midgard. It's just as good as any Viking game I've ever played on the market. It, it is a phenomenal game. The artwork is great. It doesn't do the mythology, so you're not going to have, like, in the Champions of Midgard, you're going to have the trolls and, and etc. And this one, you know, it's straight up, you're just taking lands and battling and uh, a little bit more abstract, I guess, because you don't have the picture of the people there. You're really just going out, raiding, getting stuff, and bringing it back. Uh, you do have a lot of perfect information, and if I go here, I'm going to get, I guess, roll a die and have a chance at it, but the goods you're going to get is perfect information, and get to the longhouse to trade them in for goods, a la Stone Age is there. Um, anybody who's looking for a light to medium Euro game, I highly recommend The artwork's phenomenal. If you're looking to get people into this, this might be a, a good semi-gateway game to get them in. The Vikings are going to like. The artwork is phenomenal. It doesn't look boring. It doesn't play boring. Yet, it's simplistic in its actions, and you can score pretty high. And a lot of the scoring is hidden during the game. Um, some of it is. So, you're never going to know if you're completely out of it, and that keeps people in it. Although, sometimes you can talk yourself out of it at times, I suppose. But, Raiders of the North Sea, highly, highly recommend this game. Try this one out. Seek it. Um, this is one of those things I feel like this goes right underneath the radar that should be looked at more. And this guy, Shim Phillips, I mean, keep an eye out for this designer. Phenomenal game.